Hi, do you remember the micro rad monitor uh, radiation network thing that I got in the mailbag uh, quite a few years ago uh, from Radu Motison. Um, well, I used to have it hooked up to my network here and I was monitoring everything else, but uh, I think he changed the, um, the system. I don't know, something happened because I got like an early uh, BD unit or something like that and uh, I was supposed to and it just stopped working one day and he sent me some new firmware and this was uh, quite a long time ago but I never got around to updating that firmware so I just thought I'd actually uh, do that now it's an AT uh, Mega 328 I think it is inside this thing and uh, Radu's got this uh, nice firmware upgrade guide page so I thought I'd just um, do this I've got my AVR uh, uh, Mark II uh, programmer, so hopefully that will work. It's a 3.3 volt uh, compatible unit, so he sent me a hex file. It has to be individually programmed hex file for each uh, unit, and so I've got that, and uh, presumably it will work again if I flash that. So I've got to do the AVR well, I was going to, well, he's uh, suggested AVR Dude here, but I thought, oh, no, look, I'll install Atmel Studio 7. I haven't installed it for a long, Atmel Studio for a long time. I think, you know, 5 or 6 was the last one I used before they got bought out by Microchip. Anyway, I've been sitting here trying to install this heap of crap for like 10, 15 minutes, and it's just been spinning its wheels. Most of the time, it's spent, this was all the way over here. Now it says it's caching something. It's just an... Ah, the worst installer I've ever seen. It just sits there giving you no information at all. Absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, uh, not happy with that at all. So I think I'll uh, go down the AVR dude uh, route and uh, we'll give that a try. I've never used AVR dude before, so we'll give that a go. Anyway, we'll go into um, Win AVR, I believe, is uh, contains AVR Dude and everything else. So I download and install the latest version of that. Let's go. So we'll just install that. English, thank you very much. Install that and give it a burl. Ah, oh, it's on my other screen and I can't drag it. Hang on. Yes, I can. Yeah, I agree. Whatever. Sign my life away. Oh, it's just going to put it in my C drive. Oh, yeah, whatever. It's only small. Let's go. Install programmer's notepad. I don't want that. So that's installed. That was quick and painless, unlike the bloody Atmel Studio thing. Unbelievable. Thank you very much, Eric B. Weddington, um, who maintains this um, open source. Win AVR is like an open source. Uh, so, well, it's a suite of executable open source software. Um, fantastic. And yes, it contains AVR Dude uh, down here, 5.8 CV, open source programmer software that is user extensible. So there you go. Um, now I presume I've got to uh, plug in my AVR ISP Mark II programmer. Hopefully it works. We'll find out. I'll plug it in. And it's installing device driver. Here we go. Driver not found. Ah, terrific. First hurdle. I mean, I haven't done AVR programming on this machine for a long time and, well, may not have even originally been this machine. So, yeah, let's, like... Give me a break. Arr, hate bloody tools like this. I just want to program one chip. That's it. Now my cursor's frozen. What the, the hell's going on? Stupid mouse. Got a Logitech M215. Nope. Nope. Disconnect the programmer. Nope. My bloody cursor's frozen. All right, now I remember, yeah, you had to install the AVR ISP drivers separately, and uh, that installer didn't do it, so let's, um, here it is, lib USB, blah, 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 blah. So we can actually go in here in the WinAVR stuff it installed, and we'll have to do that on our own. It looks like it might be in utils, lib USB, bin, um, obviously. Um, <laughs> is that where the install info wizard Oh, I don't know. Lib USB. Yep, Lib USB. That's what we want. So let's, I guess, try and run that. This program will create an imp file for your device before clicking. Oh, yeah. Here we go. What do we got? No. Select the device. Okay, I got to plug it in. Hang on. Here we go. Oh, so much fun. Fun for the whole family. 
Sorry, it keeps going back to the other screen. I capture on a specific screen because I've got a full HD screen, a 1920 by 1080 screen that I capture on, and it's not my main screen. So it's uh, that's just the way it is. Anyway, info. Aha, there it is. Next. I assume insert manufacturer name. <laughs> Atmel? Or is it microchip now? So I guess. I don't know. I haven't done this before. Your file. Okay. Oh, okay. Can I load that? So it's saving. Okay, we'll just save it as your file. Hmm. Okay. AVRISP2 inf. That's the. There's that like a Windows setup uh, thingamabob, is it? I don't know. I don't know enough about this crap. All right, now we're talking. I went into uh, Device Manager. Here we go. Yeah, I went into Device Manager, AVRISP, did all the manual stuff. Windows can't verify and install this driver of software anyway. You bet. Come on. Let's go. Uh, all this manual stuff, like it probably would have worked if I installed the, went through the pain of installing the Atmel Studio thing if it ever bloody well downloaded. Anyway, it's encountered a problem. Of course it has. I think I remember this before and I've probably even done a video on it, but I can't bloody well remember. Oh, close, kernel, digitally signed driver, blow it out your ass. Oh God, why can't tools just work? Oh, man. Woohoo! It may have actually worked. Look, there it is. Lib USB Win32 Drivers AVRISP Mark II. It's no longer in the other devices. So why did it tell me that whatever? It didn't work. Anyway, um, okay. We might be cooking with gas. Let's give it a bell. All right, I'm in my command prompt here. Good old back to the days of DOS. Jeez, unbelievable. Anyway, there's my uh, micro red monitor hex file that Radu's uh, prepared for me. And um, AVR, dude, there it is. It's accessed. Now, I like my AVR ISP Mark II programmer, the orange light on the top is flashing, so I don't, I can't recall if that's normal or not. I'm surprised that, you know, they wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of firmware incompatibility issue, because I've had to update the firmware on the AVR ISP Mark II several times in the past, and it's been a whole pain in the ass. It really has. Um, so let's, what do we have to do? Here we go. We've got a command here, AVR dude. So we should be able to, can we copy that? Anyway, so there's my uh, AVR ISP Mark II hacked version. You might uh, remember that I did a video on how to hack that to make it 3.3 uh, volt uh, compatible. And I can't remember if that's normal. I don't know. It's doing something. Anyway, time to hook it up to the DUT. The poor old DUT. So here's inside my little micro rad monitor. Sorry about the focus. This C920 webcam seems to have a hard time focusing on stuff. I'm not exactly sure why. Anyway, let's just make sure we get pin one correct. I've oriented it as per the photo. So that looks uh, that looks correct. Come on. Get on there. Oh, don't. You're not going to believe it. This is a 10-pin header. I've only got the 6-pin. I've only got the 6-pin header. Oh, and shit like this that just like <laughs> it just sucks your time away it really does when you've got to do something like this just once like you know like uh, ordinarily i haven't programmed atmo avr stuff for years don't have the software don't have the you know i'm not doing it's not something i'm doing every day and just ah uh, like ah uh, should have checked but i didn't and of course it doesn't fit and of course I'm not in my lab, I'm actually at my uh, editing office here doing this and I don't have the little jumper cables to go over. <sighs> it's, yeah, hang on. Yep, typical Friday. And there it is, there's the two different 6-pin and 10-pin IS, AVR ISP headers. Ugh. All right, so I've got all the wires bodged in, converting, because it's not the same uh, pinout. It's, you know, like, 
it's obviously got the same connections, but uh, the actual pinout is, apart from VCC, I think, is the only, and maybe, yeah, an equivalent uh, ground on pin six there is basically the only one that's uh, the same. So it's, yeah, just rather annoying. Uh, I hate multiple ISP programming things. Anyway, 3.3 volts. Um, I don't believe we need to apply power uh, to this. It should power it through the uh, ISP. So let's switch it on and see what happens. I believe it's supposed to... Hey, hello. There's a lead under there. Oh, green. Green. Yes, we got it. I presume that's uh, all hunky-dory. Let's try our command now. Oh, we might be on a winner. All right, now we're supposed to put in um, this command here to do the AVR do program, but C is to specify the actual uh, programmer itself. Now, I'm not sure of the ID name. Obviously, it's not the USB ASP. Well, I don't think. It could be. Um, but apparently, you can type in the command AVR dude uh, dash C A S T F, and that's supposed to put in the supported programmers oh there we go avr isp mk2 okay you can put either one okay so it's uh, all lowercase avr isp mk -I -I. let's try that cool all right i'm going for broke here here we go hopefully i've got that command right avr dude i've replaced the avr isp mark 2 i've put in my file name exactly colon i on the end here we go. Fingers crossed. In shot. It's doing something. Come on. What's it? No, no, that doesn't look promising. Oh, no, here we go. Receive timeout. Nah, STK 502. No, it's not talking to the programmer. Ah, oh, great. I knew this would happen. Like Murphy, it was guaranteed. It was guaranteed not to work. Okay, let's try changing the programmer name, AVRISP2. Let's try that. Give that a burl. And no, I'd expect it to instantly connect. So, wah, 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 wah. And I think I might know what's wrong. Look, it's got the little uh, warning thing next to it. It didn't have that before. So... Yeah, it's obviously not talking to that anymore. So, what's going on? Hmm. All right, so I just installed like another random driver off the interwebs. Um, and it seems to have, uh, seems to have done the trick. There you go. It seems to have done the trick. So now it's, well, <laughs> device manager says it's all hunky-dory. But I'm, I'm sure it said that last time, didn't it? Alrighty, let's try that again. Glutton for punishment. No, I would have expected it to talk straight away, surely. No, no, I think it's going to do the same thing. No, yeah, time out. There you go. <laughs> and it still says it's, uh, still says it's installed. So, yep, yeah, but why it's looking for the STK502, well, maybe that's sort of the the driver it's kind of using. Um, but, yeah, it's getting time out, so it's obviously clearly not working. It's not talking to the programmer. Woohoo! I got it! Hang on! Here we go! <laughs> I'll tell you in a second. I <laughs> forgot to hit record. Okay, what I did... Whoa! We're done! Safe mode, fuse is okay, flash verified, thank you, thank you very much, AVR dude, done. What I did is, um, I'll go back in here, here we go, I put in the um, dash uh, uppercase P as opposed to lowercase P, which is program, I put in the uppercase P, which is port, and then USB, yeah, the dash P, USB, uppercase P, port, uh, so apparently it's... 
supposed to, the drivers are supposed to just do USB by default or something, but hey, it couldn't find it, so that's all it was, and everyone's probably screaming at me going, Dave, oh, that's obvious, I know about that. Well, of course you do, right? It's either worked perfectly for you before, or uh, you followed instructions that worked perfectly, or you've been using it forever, but when you come... You know, to something like this, like once in a couple of years, you just want to, pro, you know, dig out your old programmer and just program a uh, header, then, well, anyway, we're done. Um, so, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy, hopefully. Um, now, I'll uh, plug, so this is re-flashed, uh, reprogrammed, so I'll put it back in the case. I'll hook it up to the uh, USB. Apparently, it takes a while to connect to the uh, micro rad um, system or whatever. Um, so I can't exactly remember if it like it pops up it should auto pop up with my location if memory serves me correctly because my one's programmed with my location um, so it should automatically identify on the network so anyway there you go um, <laughs> that was just that took me a little bit I'm not sure you know how long that uh, took me all up like an hour and something uh, plus you know going back to get the cables from the other lab so there you go I hope you uh, enjoyed that. Well, there's nothing to enjoy. I just wanted to share with you, you the uh, ultimately what I knew would be a little bit of pain in getting this working. I knew this sucker would not work first go. I don't think it ever has, the AVR ISP Mark II. I've had so many issues with it and compatibility with various uh, tool AVR tools that I've used over the years. Pain in the butt, but anyway, um, yeah, it's like driver issues and whatnot. But I'm I'm surprised I didn't have to update the firmware in this again. Um, but yeah, mine's like a 2009 vintage unit or something. Um, it's pretty old. So yeah. Anyway, hopefully I'll get this working. It looks like we've got one. Look, it wasn't live in Sydney before, but check it out. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't, it's got to be mine. Unit, yep. Double one, double zero, double zero, zero B in Cremorne. Military Row Cremorne. I do not live anywhere near Cremorne. Um, for those who want to know, for those who haven't been to Sydney before, let's have a look at the map. Here is the Sydney uh, Central Business di District, the Sydney CBD. And the iconic um, Opera House is... whoop. Yeah, right in there. There's the Harbour Bridge. Then you've got the Harbour Tunnel. Um, nobody likes the Harbour Tunnel, but it's functional. Um, yeah, it works. Um, and I used to work at the Garden Island Naval Base there for Australian Defence Industries. Jeez, that was in a galaxy far, far away. Um, and, yeah, so that's Sydney CBD. But Sydney actually extends basically all of this... clear, All of this... Um, White stuff, well, it doesn't extend down that far, pretty much. Uh, stops down at, like, Camden there, pretty much. And uh, Penrith, at the base of the Blue Mountains here, that's where it stops. And uh, that, all of that, that's about 50 kilometres from Sydney right out to the base of the mountains there. So Sydney's a pretty darn big place. And I am, like, out in the Hills District, somewhere around here, somewhere around there. So there you have it. I'm back on the grid and I'm currently the only operational one in Sydney. Um, I don't know if these other four other people have got them, uh, whether or not they've um, had like that firmware, like early units and then firmware, uh, old firmware not being compatible with some upgrade or something like that. But anyway, mine is working. What am I getting? What sort of dose am I getting? Micro sieverts per hour? 0.15, 0.15. One eight, oh. should go to the bunker, I think. Anyway, hope you liked it. Catch you next time.